Meantime, a new battle brewing on Capitol Hill, pitting Senate and House Republicans against one another. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell and newly elected House Speaker Mike Johnson headed for a showdown over emergency funding for Ukraine, along with funding the government past Thanksgiving. Senator McConnell hoping to keep military aid to Ukraine and Israel tied together, while Speaker Johnson is indicating he would like to separate the two. Let's bring in correspondent Joe Khalil, who is live in Washington. Joe, so these topics likely to be center stage on Capitol Hill over the next few weeks. Yeah, that's right, Nicole. And the hard politics of it are if Ukraine funding and Israel funding are tied together, it is much more likely that Ukraine funding passes. If they're separate, there's a good chance that Ukraine funding may fall to the wayside. So that's the reality right now. Now, House Republicans this week, they are the group that is mostly opposed to Ukraine funding. So they are going to be pushing on Thursday, and that's the plan for now, to introduce this $14.5 billion aid package that is just for Israel. Again, the story being what's left out of that is Ukraine aid. Now, the White House and Democrats here on the Hill, along with many Republicans, frankly, they want to see the U.S. fund Ukraine with weapons and with uh, money. And look, one of the leading voices behind that push is Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. He has made the argument that this issue should be altogether addressed as one because he argues there's this new axis of evil right now in, in China, in Russia, and in Iran, and they are all acting in a united way, opposing the United States and the West. So, he argues, the response to all of them should be one collective bill, one aid package that helps Taiwan with China, that helps Ukraine with Russia, and that helps Israel pushing back against Hamas and, uh, in effect, Iran as well. Now, I asked the chairman of the powerful House Foreign Affairs Committee, Michael McCall, uh, what he thinks about this. He actually agrees with McConnell. He's one of these few Republicans who thinks these should be tied together, but he acknowledges many of his colleagues on the Republican side in the House disagree with that. Here's part of our conversation. To me, it makes sense to put them all together. Uh, I know the speaker is trying to make that decision right now. Uh, we had a very good conversation with Jake Sullivan uh, in the White House and with the National Security uh, uh, Chairman. Yeah, it seems like your, your conference, majority of them would want to decouple those things and vote separately on them. Do you think Ukraine aid is seriously at risk of not passing if that happens? I, I don't think so. I, I think even if we pass the Israel on its own, uh, we're going to get all four of those threats in a package coming back from the Senate. So he brings up a good point there, Nicole. If the House does this and just votes on Israel aid by itself, the Senate, which Democrats control, could send it back with Ukraine added on, and then you've got this fight. And if it's a prolonged fight, nobody gets aid. Not Israel, not Ukraine, nobody. So we're going to see how that sort of back and forth plays out. In the meantime, we have a new House Speaker, Mike Johnson, and this is going to be his first real test. So it's going to be really interesting to see how he handles all this. He, in the past, has voted against more Ukraine aid, but he's indicated in recent days in interviews that he would be open to at least pushing back against Vladimir Putin. That's what he said. So uh, whether he votes for or against really is irrelevant. The point is, is he going to bring Ukraine up for a vote at all? in the House. He's got a lot of power in his hands now as the Speaker, and that's where it lies. So he has the power. If he puts it on the floor, Democrats and Republicans will likely vote for it. But we're going to see how he reacts to all this, Nicole. All right, Joe Kalina, live for us there on Capitol Hill. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.